Shabbat Shalom. On behalf of the board, the staff, and the clergy, I would like to welcome everyone to Congregation Beth Insurance first, and hopefully last, all virtual high holidays. Normally, the president addresses the congregation on either the first day of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, but tonight is different. It would be dishonest of me if I did not admit that I am saddened by the circumstances of this evening. This is the last time when I will have the chance and the honor to address my community as president of the congregation. And the pews are empty, the halls are silent, generations of families are not here together in our space, we are not welcoming and embracing congregants, we will not parade the Torah around the sanctuary for all to approach and honor. Normally I would be looking out on a sea of people, humming with life and excitement, full of friends and family but tonight is different. When I became president, I made a conscious decision that when I had the privilege of addressing our congregation, I was neither going to focus on nor discuss Hurricane Harvey. The rabbis had addressed Harvey from numerous perspectives, and with the emotions of such an event still raw, I did not see the need to be duplicative. Other than discussing the reopening of the Bard Sanctuary after Hurricane Harvey, I have largely stuck to my conviction. But tonight is different. My first address after opening the Barg focused on community and community building, both within the shul and greater communities. And I am proud of the work the synagogue, the clergy, the social action committee, and our congregants have done in answering the call. Last year, I addressed the community about Beth Shurn's history and legacy, announcing that Beth Shurn had been declared a historic landmark in the creation of the Legacy Foundation. The response to this initiative has been overwhelming. I planned on addressing the community tonight about my proudest moments as president and the Jewish lessons I learned as president, such as humility, patience, courage, compassion, and chesed. But tonight is different. On August 26, 2017, Hurricane Harvey's wrath flowed into our building, but you know that. The devastation and disruption it caused is well known, but heroes arose. While the wrath of Hurricane Harvey was in full effect, congregants took it upon themselves to brave the flooded building to get our Torah scrolls to safe ground. As the executive committee and the staff scrambled to make plans for the high holidays, through the assistance of a congregant, we were able to secure Lakewood Church for a meaningful and much needed coming together for the high holidays. There was also a school and offices that needed to be repaired, as well as B'nai Mitzvah and other life cycle events needing to occur. Then President Arlene Stoller, and Executive Director Lou Dorfman worked tirelessly to assist and coordinate reconstruction and resume operations. And when our building was not available, Bris Shalom opened their doors and allowed us to join their community. It was not only heroic, but bringing together both communities was really needed at that time. You, our community, stepped up in heroic fashion. From volunteering at the school in the shul, helping clean up the community and people's homes, providing office space, apartments, and vehicles to those affected in our community, and contributing to an astronomical fundraising campaign which allowed us to rebuild and get back to normal with relative speed. But tonight is different. I'm sure every president has their day that will live in infamy. Sitting in my office on March 11, 2020, an assistant announced they're closing the rodeo. There was some buzz around the office, some talk about school and spring break, which was the next week. And other than the fact that my daughter was getting ready to leave for a trip to Germany and Austria, which did not happen, I started thinking about the name mitzvahs we had planned for the upcoming weeks. I met with Rabbi Strauss. I met with Andy Berger. The executive committee met. And thus began the daily and weekly conversations, checking numbers, talking to healthcare professionals, monitoring statements and advisories from the CDC and local government authorities, hearing from congregants, going virtual only, slowly reopening, figuring out how we would have a minion and discussing how we were going to handle that handle the high holidays. The whole time, assuming things would certainly be back to normal by now. But tonight is different. I do take comfort in the fact that through all of what has been thrown our way, we have continued to call the children of our community to the Bema to become a B'nai Mitzvah. We have performed baby namings and brises. We have engaged congregants with online programming and educational opportunities. We have held services Friday night and Saturday mornings and brought back a daily minion as quickly as was safe to do so. And although I am not looking at a sea of people right now, 
and our building is relatively empty tonight, the sanctuaries are still filled with the sounds of our tradition, and we are still able to connect with each other spiritually on these high holidays. But make no mistake about it, tonight is different. This situation is different than any we have ever faced before, and the reaction and response needs to be different. During Harvey, heroes arose. So in the different dilemma, who is going to be our COVID-19 heroes? It will take a different type of hero to answer this call. You see, with Harvey, all of our heroes were about getting back to normal, resuming what had been, we had been doing, bringing our community back together. But while there will be a time, hopefully, in the near future where we will be back together and getting back to normal and resuming what we had been doing and bringing our community back together, what that will look like and how it will be accomplished will be different. What have, what have we learned during this pandemic about connecting with our congregants, about what our congregants are seeking, and about how we can provide it better? How does what we have learned influence our business model from staffing to technology, from dues models to membership? Our COVID-19 hero will make this disaster an opportunity based on what we have learned to affect change that maybe we are not ready to make, but that needs to be made, an opportunity to shape the future of Bethy Shearn. In a few months, I will no longer be president. I will leave the community in the very able hands of David Stein. But I think I have yet to earn the title of a COVID-19 hero. I know our clergy and staff have. I also know that the leadership that came before me hadn't had the foresight to put cameras in the sanctuaries and live stream our services, our COVID heroes. Also, Nancy and Arthur Brand and Gilda and Warren Sprungen family are true COVID-19 heroes who graciously give in memory of their parents, AI and Minette Sheps, and Alan Brand. Heroes not only for the generosity that they have shown in underwriting much of the technology, which allows us to stream our services daily, but also for sponsoring the production of these high holidays. Philip Langley is also a COVID hero, producing multiple services and handling our video and audio production, which has been our lifeline in connecting spiritually with our community. I want my chance to be a COVID-19 hero. Therefore, I have informed President Stein and he approved that I'll be trying charging a strategic planning committee to develop a long-term plan for the future success and sustainability of Bethy Shearn. But here's the catch. I need you to join me in being a COVID-19 hero. My success, Bethy Shearn's success, is dependent on you. In order to prepare a strategic plan, we will need to know what you want. We will need to have your input and imagination, your ideas and experiences, your wants and desires. We will need you. During the process, there will be opportunities for different focus groups to be formed so that we can obtain input from as many in the community as possible. I understand there are time constraints and other obligations that need to be tended to, and I am sure you have many reasons and justifications for not having been involved in the show in the past. But tonight is different. Please join us in pioneering the future path of Congregation Bethy Shearn. One thing that is not different about tonight is that I have numerous people to thank for their support, advice, and incredible hard work and time put into making these different High Holidays as special and meaningful as possible. Thank you to the Special High Holiday Committee Forum to advise us to these different High Holidays, which was chaired by Arthur Nathan. Once it became evident that actions and monitoring was necessary, my executive committee committed to meeting once a week and sometimes more often for the past six months to determine on a weekly and sometimes daily basis how we are going to continue operations and services through the ever-evolving situation. Thank you to the Executive Committee for your commitment and work on behalf of the congregation. Likewise, thank you to the board and past presidents who dedicated their time and efforts to handling the situation and focusing on the future well-being of the shul. This has been a spring and summer like no other for our clergy, culminating in high holidays for which no clergy has ever been trained. For the past six months, the clergy has been inventing, reinventing, and improvising on a weekly and daily basis all that we can provide at Bethy Shuren, including completely revamping the High Holiday experience while still furthering our missions and serving our congregants and community. We are truly blessed to have the dedicated, creative, and talented clergy team of Rabbi Morgan, Rabbi Fort, Rabbi Horwitz, Rabbi Emeriti Siegel, and Rosen, all led by Senior Rabbi Brian Strauss and Cantor Mayor Finkelstein. Similarly, thank you to our staff who has worked tirelessly during the past six months to keep everything going. Thank you to our Executive Director, Andy Berger, and to Ashley Mills, Jennifer Rosenzweig, Mindy Stern, Jennifer Sutton, 
and our incredible staff at Beth Shurn. A special thank you to Cheryl Eskowitz and Jennifer Levine for all their hard work and dedication to continuing the education of our children and young adults. And to our B'nai Mitzvah Coordinator, Sarah Kaiser, and B'nai Mitzvah Committee Chair, Susan Sandler, for working hand in hand with our B'nai Mitzvah families in scheduling and rescheduling and coordinating these family special events. Again, thank you to Nancy and Arthur Brand and Gilda and Maura Sprung, Warren Sprung and family who graciously give in memory of their parents, A.I. and Manette Sheps and Alan Brand. Thank you to Douglas Newman and Mouthwatering Media for consulting and producing our High Holiday experience this year. But most importantly, to my family, Sarah, Amanda, and Rebecca. I owe not only a thank you to you, but an apology. Thank you for the support and understanding that has allowed me to devote the time necessary to Bethy Shurin. You see, I'm not just president. I also have a job. I'm a husband and a father. My daughters, Amanda and Rebecca, are entering their senior and sophomore year at the High School for Performing and Visual Arts. They've had trips, programs, performances, and events canceled. As they've been going through this ordeal, I've had to focus on Bethy Shurin, and B'nai Mitzvahs, and daily minions, and religious school, and the high holidays, and my legal practice. Sarah has done an amazing job of keeping it all together and filling in where I have been lacking, all while maintaining her own legal practice. I am sorry if I have not been able to be there for you, and I thank you for your support and understanding. I love you all. Finally, as we enter the period of forgiveness, I come before you, my congregation, to ask for your understanding, as I don't believe I can ask for true shuva, as I cannot say I would not act the same given the same circumstances. So I ask for your understanding in the dealing with this pandemic. I never wanted to be the president to shut down the synagogue. I never wanted to be the president who told people they couldn't pray that wanted to pray. I never wanted to be the president who, for the first time in our storied history, didn't have Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur services in a physical location for our congregants to attend. However, I am that president. If any of these actions have offended or hurt you, I apologize and ask for your understanding. Everything has been done or that may need to be done, is done with much consternation and for what is believed to be is the best interest of Bethy Shurn and its congregants. So let's embrace this different time. Let's work hard and let's rise to the challenge. And as we begin this High Holy Day season, I hope our services, while different, are spiritual and meaningful for you and your families and may you be inscribed in the Book of Life. Bishanatovah.